Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. This week is moving along quickly. Uh, we got a bunch of things to do. I had something a little bit different today, you know, uh, something out of the ordinary. And uh, first off, I want to start off by thanking my good friend Joe uh, over at Joe's shop. He sent me this awesome hat. Check this out, right? Sent me this cool hat. And you know what's nice about this hat? It's a low profile hat. You see, it doesn't have that big, you know, arch in the front. And, and what's nice about this, when I ride my bicycle and things like that, I could wear something that doesn't blow off. You know, that big, those big light duty hats, they blow off your head. It's got the Joe, Joe shop logo on it. Really nice. Really enjoying it. Joe, I just want to say thanks very much. Appreciate it. And uh, it's good for windy days. And for, like I said, when I'm riding my bike, you know, I never even knew these type of hats uh, existed. Good quality. Um, okay, let's get started. Okay, next up, I uh, was on my walk the other night. And uh, you know how I'm always looking for something interesting for the show. And I uh, I found a uh, an old, <laughs> believe it or not, an old guitar. Not an expensive one, but it was broken in the neck. And I said, you know, I think I could fix this. And, uh, you know, my, my grandfather was a uh, musician, but then the, uh, the monkey died. And uh, so now uh, my nephew is a really talented musician, can play a multitude of instruments. And I said, you know what? I want to see if I could take this, uh, this guitar and let me show it to you. Okay, here is the guitar in question. And uh, now it's by no means a... Uh, a decent guitar but you know what it, sometimes you, some of the best music comes from instruments that aren't so fantastic you know uh look at the uh, willie nelson's guitar you know that thing looks like <laughs> like heck right but he he loves it so anyway here's what we got we have a you know a guitar here that uh, looks like it's seen some and this here just recently you know I, I maybe it was exposed to some some uh weather but i said i'm i want to see and here's where the break is you see here the neck can you see that let me show you a little better okay you see that you see the neck here and uh i don't know if this is the front bridge i, I don't know any terms so it's funny we do have a, a subscriber that that does uh guitar restorations and what beautiful he does all kinds of instrument restorations what a nice job he does but uh you can see here you know it's uh <laughs> it's a mess, you know, but you see what the break is. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do, is we're going to cut these strings off. We're going to, uh, somebody tried to repair it with a nail. That's always a mistake. We're going to re-glue the neck and then see if we can not get this to play a song. That's, that's the goal, to see if we can't get this to play a song, a decent song. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the guitars or anything like that, which I'm not, but uh, I did watch a few YouTube videos to find out. So when you want to remove the strings, they say you cut them off because strings are, are disposable. And you can get a new set of six strings, which is what a guitar holds. And it will cost you, you know, less than $10. So uh, they say you're supposed to change them every so often. So we're going to use a uh, nice pair of a Channel Lock 358 uh, nippers. And you can see what happens when you cut them. They cut very easily. We're going to cut them off. And you cut them over the sound hole. And then you uh, slip out the back here. You can see we're going to pull these out. And we're going to take them off the front. And then we'll work on that. Okay. Now you see on the back, we got a little separation here. This might have had some water damage. Because remember, this is all thrown out from the flood. So we'll put some glue in there and clamp all that down. We got some cracks around the base. You need to do that for the sound quality. As if I know what I'm talking about. Now, you can see here how the... Uh, the fretboard, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm, how it's separated, but you see this will clamp back. Now, uh, where this split was, and you can see this was some kind of hardwood, uh, we're going to put that in there like that. It matches up nice. We'll glue it and clamp it down, clamp everything nice and tight with a lot of clamps. Let that sit for 24 hours, and then if we feel any additional support is needed, we'll drill in and add some doweling after the glue is set up. So you don't try and do all that once. Let it let the glue hold up. If you think some extra support is necessary, we'll dowel, put some wood dowels in there instead. Okay, so let's now if we needed a really strong, uh, secure bond, we could use epoxy, but believe it or not regular wood glue type bond especially when put on and clamped really strong 
the wood, the glue is actually almost as strong, if not stronger than the wood fibers itself. So if you properly apply good yellow type on glue, this stuff is, is, it, fantastic okay you added extra glue you could see it oozing out now what you want to do is you are adding clamping pressure and you're going to wipe off any excess glue that squeezes out with a damp rag but just keep adding pressure until the uh, guitar neck is set now for the crack back here we just poured a little bit of uh, a little bit of glue in the crack put some sawdust I always keep a jar of sawdust that you never know when it comes in handy and uh and just rub the sawdust into the cr crack that has glue already in it and uh and then we'll wipe it off and uh that'll just give a little baseline we can come back later on and, and add some more. now there's an old saying that says a woodworker can never have too many clamps and isn't that the truth now where we have this the separation here between the uh, front panels and the body of the guitar uh when it there was that little crack that was open i filled it with glue let the glue seep in there you don't need a lot it just has to get into the right spot and then put the clamps on we have this board to level it out to give extra pressure and now we have everything clamped up we'll set it over now to we set this up on the furnace uh to burn it to dry and you can see here uh the clamps it's very <laughs> it's in a good spot here this will be dry and we'll let that sit for another 24 hours we will not touch it let that glue really set up hard okay, it's been 24 hours we took the clamps off the neck but a few other cracks have uh, opened up this probably was you know water damage that's why now the wood is starting but we're filling in any crack with the glue let that dry over here we're giving this a second coat of glue just on that crack until we get all solid. Now you can see the neck here where it was broken. The neck uh, looks very nice. A little bit of extra glue I put over here, but you can see here the seam, everything looks good. And uh, we'll let this sit for another couple hours and then we'll clean it. Okay, we gave it an additional 24 hours to dry because we re-glued a lot of, you know, like I said, any cracks that opened up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it. Now, um, this is, these are called frets, right? And what we're gonna do is these gotta be smooth. So we're gonna hit this with some, some emery cloth or something and get those nice and smooth so the strings can go. We re-glued in the uh, top bridge, if that's what it's called. Now we're gonna clean everything. We're gonna use mineral spirits and wipe the whole guitar down because you don't want to use water right and then we're going to wax the whole thing with some uh, furniture wax put some strings on and Bob's your uncle Okay, the strings I chose for this uh, guitar is uh, made by Dunlop made in the USA I think Northern California yeah, uh, Benicia, California, and uh, these are Phosphor Bronze uh, 1254 is the size. You can see what they look like. They're just, you know, beautiful strings. They have a nice resonance to them. Let me show you something very interesting about tuning a guitar. Okay, for tuning, we have this cute little tuner here. It runs off a little watch battery, and this is really interesting. And what you do is you clip it onto the head of the of the guitar, and you can see it has different instruments. That's G for the guitar. It also has uh, a B for uh, bass, violin, you know, ukulele. It has different instruments you can use with this, but we'll leave it on guitar. And let me show you how interesting this thing works. I'm going to have to kill the lights a bit so you can see. Okay, we clipped it onto the, uh, to the head of the guitar, and you can see here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pluck the E string, okay? And you can see it's reading, but it's reading low. Now that line that goes up and down, if it gets into the middle, then it'll turn, the screen will turn green when you're in tune. So you, we gotta tighten up the E string. There we go, we're in tune now, okay? See how that works? Now again, I can loosen it and loosen it, but if I go too much, it'll go past. So it'll be either flat where it is now, or sharp if it goes to the other side. So. There is our E note right there, we're in tune. Then we go the next note. Here you can see here, we have an A note. Again, we're gonna twist the, right now I'm turning the, uh, the screws here to uh, tighten the string until we get our perfect A. There we go, you see the green? There we go. And then the next note up is a D. And we're gonna, you know, there we go little bit high on there you always want to tune up to a note you don't want to tune down and loosen it up you know so we 
But here we go. We got D now. So that's how you go through all six strings. Very interesting. A lot of here fun. Here we go. Now we're all strung up. And you can see here, we polished the frets. You can see they look nice, right? And uh, let me show you what it sounds like. Listen to this now. See if I could play something now my nephew's the real one but I can maybe knock something out for you now one last thing before we get started is I'm gonna pull out my uh, specialty pick this is a nice vintage fender see that celluloid pick isn't that beautiful they still make them today and uh, these a lot of the uh, famous musicians use. you can hear the difference when you use a pick And another thing you might find interesting, a lot of you, you can take a, a small piece of steel and run it across the uh, the frets, and you can have a Hawaiian style guitar. Listen to this. She had a lot of fun, right? Okay, uh, for those of you that are longtime viewers of the, sh of the show, there was no wool to be pulled over your eyes. Uh, I know, I know, you figured it out early, but uh, I was just thinking, can you imagine the first time viewer to this channel? Can you imagine if this is the first time they ever tuned into this channel and they saw me doing that and they were like, is this guy kidding? It don't, it don't even look like he's playing. <laughs> anyway, that was a... Uh, it was a little bit of a fun, but it was a tribute to a, a great musician by the name of Greg Lake from Emerson Lake and Palmer. Back in 1972, he wrote the song From the Beginning. What a fantastic tune, and uh, I'll have a link in the description. you got to check him out. He was playing, the link I'm going to include is in 2005 at the age of 58. He recently passed away. Uh, at 2005, he did a, a tour, uh, and uh, this was my favorite rendition of that wonderful song, 1972. Boy, there was some good music back then. There was some junk, too, but I mean, not like today. It seems like a lot of junk out there today, isn't there? Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's episode. A little bit different, a little bit of fun. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.